Once again, I want to welcome you to the last episode of the last broadcast titled What is a Blessing? And uh, if you watch the first episode, you see that it was quite explosive. But if you think that was explosive, I want you to look at the second episode, this last part. You are uh, is is quite dynamic in this presentation and also the message is quite deep. If you understand the concept of what prosperity is all about or you want to get clarity of what prosperity is all about or how God actually enriches his people, I think you want to listen to this message because it's it's the impact of it, the insight of it is quite the revelation. Uh, because we a lot of people have been led astray through the uh, the teaching of giving prosperity, blessings, and all that. So it's a whole misconception out there. And I'm glad that these uh, two colleagues of mine, they, they came into the studio and they shared some very beautiful insights, which I feel was quite beneficial. I enjoyed the, the message. I hope as much as you, we also enjoy this message and it's going to transform your life and see, let you, help you to see this pers the perspective that God wants us to worship him with our finances and how he wants us to actually enjoy or reap his blessings that he has promised us so i want you to stay tuned and uh, watch this program don't forget to subscribe share and give a thumb up to whatever so that whenever we have messages you look at that ring bell that tells you we publish so by the way i'll try to be bringing more message to you more frequently it used to be it's now once a week but i'm trying to do like two three broadcast so that uh, we can keep you updated especially in this difficult time we need the word of god to stay strong we need to encourage our faith so i'm hoping you enjoy it share and subscribe god bless you and, and that's, uh, can we take this a little bit further mm. you know I, i've heard people see we, we sons and daughters of god are actually born to the givers to the givers. Giving is our is in our de spiritual DNA. Okay. You know, by, by by the aid of the spirit. Because if you if you if you look at this, mm. now sir, look at the promise. It said that they might receive the promise of the spirit. Yeah. Through faith. Mm. Now, now when we receive this Holy Spirit in us, mm. um, by faith, you there are things that are actually in Chapter 22, verse 16 to 18. Mm. He says, Because you have done this. Mm. Because you did not withhold mm. your only begotten son, you gave him to me. Mm. It is now your love has been made manifest. Love, sir. Hold on yeah. there. I, I, I picked the word from there. Thank yeah. you. I, I love this. I love the setting. Yeah. You see, if we go back to that same scripture, yeah. he says that that he said that he said say Abraham might come to say that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. Yeah. That we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith so i want to contribute something here Good. because whenever we hear the word giving it, it looks like that um it is not a conditional um, um thing that not until um you give. you give you are not blessed now it, it boils down to a fact that no we have been blessed we have been blessed and our blessing is by faith Mm. Our blessing came to us by faith, mm. not with certain condition. We understood very well that seed time and harvest, as long as this earth remained, we not cease. But look at it, it came to us by the Spirit. Yeah. And, and I so much believe that our giving is love oriented. Yeah. Our be. giving is love-oriented, and this love has been shared abroad no. in our heart no. by this same spirit, by the Holy Ghost. Yeah. It's been shared abroad. So when we give, we are not giving because we are anticipating blessing. Already in Christ, we are blessed. Exactly. That's the, that's some people say you sow a seed, one thousand. If you sow one thousand, God is going to give you ten thousand or twenty thousand or that. That is not true. That is not true. We should uh, get a balance in this concept. Uh, it's not. God does not quantify as a result of what you give, although there is scripture with the, uh, as the measure of what you give, God will also give you back. But that is, we should not narrow it uh, within that context mm -hmm. only. There are other people who give to unbelievers, who give to the, 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 those who are suffering, mm -hmm. who give not only in the church, 
who give to the society, who go to hospital and take care of people and the rest of them, who give to the person that you don't know. Mm. I must not come to the church and give in the church so that God will bless me. Mm. There are many aspects that I can give. And God will see your heart. God looks at the heart and their faith and he will bless you. Mm. It's not because you gave it to the church, you gave it to build a temple and the rest of them. There should be a balance. Mm. God cannot be boxed into. God hasn't got his charity. And, and, and this is the reason why, and this is the reason why, uh, when we begin to attribute uh, uh, this and say that not until we give, we are not blessed. It's like we are now narrowed down to the law again. And we find that, that when people are actually practicing the law, they find it difficult to live up to the standard of righteousness. And this is the reason why believers will struggle to give. Because they are not being brought back to the law again. But if they can buy this pers perspective, buy from this perspective, that our giving is love-oriented. We are children, sons and daughters of Agape. And now, when, when, when someone wants to give, he is not giving out of necessity or grudgingly anymore because the Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. He gives because he has seen the love of God in his, in his life. Yes. Why? Some people are complaining that they have been giving and God has not blessed them and that it takes so long for the arrival of their blessings. Why they keep on giving and giving and uh, we are asking this person, it seems it takes long for God to bless uh, the so-called Christians or believers. Is that true? Why? What is happening? Yeah, that's my question. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Mm -hmm. um, let me look at, I'm going to answer this question based on the statements that you made. Mm -hmm. Okay, you said it seems like it takes long. Number one, let me use the word long. God um, functions um, outside the realm of time number one and I, I think we need to correct that but that's not the angle i'm actually going into right now number two is this uh there is a wind in the body of christ that most of the leaders are actually capitalizing on right now and making merchandise of the flock and if this error has to be corrected on this platform um, I think it's high time we ministers of the gospel uh, speak from the pages of the scripture and begin to pick out pick out those scriptural rudiments that are required if you must maximize success in totality they are all encapsulated in the Bible. It's just that sometimes preachers will choose one particular uh, factor at the expense of the other and overblow it out of proportion. And now the message will not come to the hearers balanced. And for example, now we speak about giving, 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 give, give. And that is what the believers or the flock has been hearing all through their life. Give, give, give. We understand that we give, but I've always been saying it here that our giving should be born out of love. Now, but look at the scripture very well. There are other factors that are actually encouraging success, sir. Yeah. Which preachers should be emphasizing on as well. Mm -hmm. For example, the issue of diligence. And see a man diligent in all he's doing. The Bible says, he shall stand before kings and not mere men. Mm -hmm. But look at it, sir. We tell them to give. They have been sowing and been sowing. Whether they are sowing out of necessity or they are sowing gradually at a particular point in time because they felt like they've exhausted all their seeds. But the truth of the matter is that it is high time we go back to the Bible and show them that there are other factors that encourage lasting success. For example, I just made mention of diligence right now. Let's look at the Bible and see what the Bible says. Is this diligent factor in the scripture? Let's look at the Bible. If you look at the, the book of Proverbs, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 24, it said, the diligent hand will rule, but lazy ends in forced labor. Say, but laziness ends in forced labor. Yes. So if I give and give and give and fold my hands and go back to my praying altar and keep on praying all the day and even escalate my fasting period, see, poverty will always knock on my door. You can be that anointed and still remain frustrated. Yes. That is exactly what we are saying here. I think we need to give the, the gospel is balanced. Mm. It's like a food that you eat. When you keep on eating a particular 
people are food, let's say, that is loaded with carbohydrate at the expense of the other, what do you expect? You, you, you might be eating, but it looks like you're malnourished. But the diet has to be balanced. We need the vitamins there. We need the proteins there. We need the carbohydrates. We need it in all the, 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 the nutrients in totality. That's when you eat it into, and you allow it to uh, come into your body and yes. you begin to put to practice all that the, 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 the factors have been, as they are listed in the scripture. You will see yourself leveraging on lasting success. Now. That's what I think. We, we, you can't give it. See, the word of God is like a triple stand. You can't expect somebody to always leverage on one particular stand and allow others not to be there. Then when you put the pot on top of the thing, it will collapse. Mm. We, 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 it's high time we begin to preach the full gospel, the, the total gospel. gospel. The diligent hand shall be made fat. That's what the Bible says. Exactly. Now, yeah. and we, we are not called to just confess the word of God. You see, we have to work it out. He said, yeah. work out yourself. We need to work it out. There is mm. a working out to those things. Mm. Yeah, thank you so much. Mm. Um, if I'm to add a little to what you have said. Yes, sir. Um, also, we should not look at God's delay as divine denial. Yes, sir. You're right. Now, if there's a delay in reciprocating what you have given, mm. it does not mean that God has denied you you are entitled to mm. um, Again, we need to understand again that God can say, wait, my son. Mm. God knows that uh, if he gives you that which you have been asking of God, mm. or that which you have been sowing and sowing and sowing, if God gives it to you immediately, mm. that can take you to hell. Mm. That can make you to collapse. Mm. That can make you to derail from mm. the fundamental issues of life. That's true, sir. So God will wait for the appropriate time where he sees some spiritual maturity and mm. some spiritual growth in your life before he releases that which you have been asking of God. And then again, God can give it to you immediately. God can say, wait. God can say, this is not for you. Because if God releases it to you, here some of us will collapse. Some of us will derail from the faith because I, I we have what you're saying, sir. abundance. Mm, mm. Yeah. You see, you see, he said a child, though he's a priest, is not different from a servant. Yeah. Though he's the master of all, mm. but he is brought under two thousand and governors until that appointed time. Yeah. That means there are some level of maturity that is required of a believer so as to handle mm. the capacity of the blessings that God has actually given to him in yeah. Christ. Mm. Now, you know, God is actually much more interested in a man's soul. Mm. More than the man is actually crying and saying, God bless me, God bless me. But I still want to hit on the very factor that I, I brought in, which is very important. And I want to add it to what you just said right now. Yeah. If you look at Ecclesiastes chapter 9, mm. verse number 10, the Bible says, it says, whatever your hand finds to do, do, do it with all your mind. Your mind. For in the realm of the dead, where you are going, going. there is neither walking nor planning. Please, sir, let's look at it. Walking, no planning, no knowledge, no wisdom. Yes. So these are factors. Yes. These are factors yes. in the scripture that are required for lasting success. Diligence. You say, well, let's go back to it again. Yes. Whatever your hand finds to, to do. do. Mm. 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 Many hands have not found mm. something to Many, do. Many, there are hands, but they, they have found nothing. They are emotionally waiting for God to, to, to pull manna from heaven. From dead heaven. Sir, <laughs> I'm an apostle, I'm a preacher of the gospel. Yeah. At the same time, I'm a businessman. Yeah. And I have other different chains of business that I do. Yeah. I'm into properties, I, I do automobiles and stuff like that. But you see, I am not sitting down and waiting for them to bring the tithe and the offering yeah. so as to me paying my bills. Yeah. No. And the Bible says that the husband man shall be the partake of the first fruits. Yeah. If I preach to them, so Abraham mm. have come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus. Yeah. Now they should see the blessings of Abraham in my life. Yeah. Now I become a living proof, a living example that in this ministry that God has called me into, now I'm a shining light to them that God can pick you up and give you an assignment and take care of you even in the midst of that assignment. Yeah. Scripture says, for faithful is he that calleth thee, who I also will do, do it. it. Life in Christ should not be stressful, it should be stress-free. Yeah, yes, that's, that, that's correct. And uh, we lazy about. 
Look at the fact of this, sir. He said, wherefore, where is it? Where whatever you, 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 your hands find to do, do it with all your mind. All their mind. For in the realm of the day, where you are going, there is neither working. So we are expected to work now. Mm. Nor planning. So we are expected to play Plan now. No knowledge. So some level of knowledge in the very field that you find yourself is required. See, you can't excel in any endeavor if you relegate knowledge to the being. See, your first, your edge over your competitors in the very field you are into is what you know. Yeah. Because in the realm of the spirit, what you know you own. What you don't know owns you and makes you a slave. But, so, so we can't afford to just sit down every day. We go to church and come back from church and go home and fast and pray and not go outside. Jesus said, he said, occupy till I come. Where are we occupying? You see, the problem we have in the society, some pastors have made the church a business place. Mm -hmm. They want you to come and sit down there and fast, mm -hmm. and fast, and fast. And after fasting, they ask you to sow seed. Mm -hmm. They do not teach people so fundamental issues. Mm -hmm. To work hard. Mm -hmm. To work hard. Mm -hmm. God wants to see what you are doing. And mm -hmm. God will come into what you are doing. Bless the work And then you bless the handwork you are doing. Mm. That is exactly what God is looking for of us. You don't sit there and be praying and fasting. I have fasted for 30 months. I have fasted for 30 days. I have fasted for 21 days. God has not come forth. Mm. You, if God has not arrived to you, it means that you don't have the faith. You don't have the work. You don't have the knowledge. God is waiting for you to lay your hand on something that is relevant, mm, mm, something, mm. That is re that, something that is also contemporary and meaningful. Mm. And then God will come into your issue and then raise you up. Sir, have you seen, have you noticed now that it looks like the world right now, the people outside <coughs> there now are, are actually leveraging on some of these fundamentals that are enshrined in the very scriptures that were given to us. Yes, exactly. They were given to us believers. Mm. The what now is leveraging on it. Yeah. And they are, see, God is no respect of any mankind. Yes. If you are an unbeliever today and you come back to this very scripture and pick up those very basic principles mm. and apply them in your daily living, you will just leverage on success as simple as that. Mm. Look at it. Knowledge is required. Wisdom is required. Just as I just read in Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10. He said, uh, working hard is required. Not when you are dead. Now, now, here. Yeah. Yeah. It but is now. Now, some people are busy complaining mm. that it appears that mm. God is blessing the non-Christians, those who are not Christian, those who are not born again, those who are atheists, those who are not into the church, and that it appears that um, they are making um, root way, they are succeeding more than the so-called born again and so forth. How do you look at this? Is it possible? Is it happening? Or it's not happening. If it is happening, why is it like that? So I, I think it, 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 we, are, we are in the same place. Mm -hmm. Now, when there are some basic laws that are not just spiritual in operation, yep. they are both spiritual and physical as well. For example, mm -hmm. he said as long as the earth remains, mm -hmm. seed time and harvest will not cease. Yeah. So if a farmer today mm -hmm. that does not know God, mm -hmm. But understood that if he doesn't see, he will not have it. He will not have Goes it. to his farm and begin to labor and begin to plant seed in his farm. He will and have takes it. care of his farm. Mm. So in the days of harvest, whether he's a believer or he not will a come believer, back home rejoicing. Yes, he will come back home rejoicing. Yes. It is a law. It is a it law. It is a law that governs both in the spirit realm and in the, the physical realm. Law. Now, sir, look at this word here. Mm. Proverbs 22, verse 29 says, Do you not see someone skilled in their work? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many times do we believers actually go and look for skills, acquire skills mm -hmm. in the very sector that we find ourselves? Yeah. How many of us, mm -hmm. we think that quoting the scriptures, see, mm -hmm. I quote scriptures, I love scriptures, mm -hmm. I love, I can't, I can't live without scripture, mm -hmm. praise God. Mm -hmm. But now what do I do? The very scriptures that I picked right now, I go and apply them in my very business. Jesus sent them to the world. Mm -hmm. He said, go ye into the world. 
Now, it's, it didn't say stay in the church morning till nine, 24 hours of the day, seven days a week. Mm. He said that the word, I said, go make disciples of all nations. So, in the nation of, uh, what do you call it, in the banking nation, that we have disciples there, they are in the banking sector and they are heading the banking sector and they are professionals and they are skillful in what they do. You come to the, 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 the engineering sector, they are there. They, we have engineers, we have politicians. These days, it seems like even believers right now are running away from politics. Mm. And they call it dirty game. Yeah. And this is the reason why we are now allowing the unbelievers to rule us okay. and dictate for us how to live our life. Mm. Bring up some policies and principles that are anti-Christianity. Yeah. And what do we if we allow them? They are now ruling us. Mm. It's high time we preachers go back to the drawing board mm. and let them understand and let the flock understand mm. that as much as you have studied the scripture, he said, this book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth, meditate upon it day and night, and look at it, this story, say, observe to do. Observe. This is where we feel. Mm. We meditate upon it day and night, but we do not want to observe. See, observe means be very careful in your application mm. of what you have meditated on day and night. Apply them. God is no respecter of persons. Thank you. God is no respecter of person. Whether you're a Christian, mm. whether you're an atheist, mm. whether you're born again or not, you are born again, whether you're a Muslim, if you follow divine principles, mm. God will respect whatever you are doing. Thank you. You don't go there and sit. The Bible says a little sleep. A little slumber. A little slumber. Mm. That poverty <clears throat> will hit on you. When you are sleeping, you say you're a Christian and meditating. Mm -hmm. I'm still praying. I'm still thinking. I'm... Procrastination is not only thief, thief, thief of, of time. It's mm -hmm. a thief of opportunity. Mm -hmm. When we continue to procrastinate, what we're supposed to do today, we leave it for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Poverty will come upon you tomorrow. What If we want to be successful, we need to go into planning. Mm -hmm. And then now, mm -hmm. and be practical about and be pragmatic. Don't stay and listen yourself mm -hmm. and go to church. Because you sang so much, so well in the church, and therefore God will begin to release blessing upon you and begin to pour blessing upon you. And this when you singer, are this, when you this, talk, singer, uh, this is a blessing of God upon your life. How about them going to the studio, wax an album, mm. make something, no, see, with the intention of blessing humanity, not because they want to make money. See, if you can touch a man's heart, you can mm. touch his pockets. Yeah. And uh, when you are talking about these singers, yes, sir. they should also be very careful mm. and uh, try to follow the principles and do something that is good, something that is, you know, that will excel. Yes, Excellence is what Excellence. God requires from us. Mm. You don't because you're a believer. You say, well, let's just put it out in the market where you are prayed over it. Mm. You did not do it well. You did not perfect what you are doing and you expect God to release divine blessings upon you when you are lazy about when you didn't follow perfection mm -hmm. when you didn't you follow excellency which God requires from you brother whether you are in the church or you are in the world mm -hmm. God wants us to follow the divine principles and God mm -hmm. will really bless us and no these matter who's principles are, God they are these principles are all encapsulated in the mm -hmm. word of God mm -hmm. believers will come and pick these various principles and repackage it and they call it <laughs> motivational speakers mm -hmm. fine and they will use it mm -hmm. see we are there good getting all those motivational speaking mm -hmm. the very principle they are applying or they are teaching they are all found in the word of God yeah. and we believe that we now use the word of God as our sleeping tablets we don't even apply what we read that's the problem yeah. that's the problem there is no skill even when the singer wants to go and wax an album in the studio he goes and pray and pray he, I'm a praying machine I pray all the time mm. now he prays and prays and after praying he forgets the aspect of skill yeah excellence yeah dotting everything that he's doing to the point so as to becoming a blessing to everyone that hears the rhythm of the song that from a distance a thousand kilometers where you hear the song see for example there are some albums where, where there are some songs you will hear today without you even asking if they ask you who sang this song you say i know i had this voice my goodness mm -hmm. i know it, it is ben here yeah. uh, or it is uh, don Mon, sorry it is this it is this person you can tell from a, a thousand they are not like they are they are they are they, they, they are, should, should I use the word, um, 
It's like they, they distinguish themselves yeah. in their field. Yeah. They become thoughtful. That though you might not like their face, mm. you might not like the way they look, mm. but somehow there is something about what they do mm. that you can leave any nation you are and still be searching for them. Mm. And when you see them, you pay heavily mm. because they are so distinguished in their field mm. that nobody can do what they do the way they do it. Yeah. It takes some level of time to graduate to that platform. It takes some level of practice and knowledge, consistency in what you are doing. You are pushing. It looks like the doors are shut, but you don't just give up. You keep on pushing. And you have failed and failed, but you keep on searching for new ways of doing that very thing. At the end of the day, when you come out, it is just one thing that will just set you apart. You become a thoughtful, and people will pay heavily. People don't recognize nobody. Yeah. People recognize people who have made impact in their own benefit, and that's what they're paying for. Thank you, brother. And bringing to a conclusion, uh, a summary of all that we've been saying. Yes, sir. What we're saying here mm. is that the believers should work hard. Mm. Uh, they should not spend all their time praying and fasting alone. Mm. I'm not um, trying to say that believers should not fast. I'm not trying to. Uh, say that believers should not pray, mm. but there should be a balance. A little to the left, a little to the la uh, to the right. Mm. Let there be a balance. Don't lazy out. Don't be lazy. Mm. Uh, find something and get busy. And God will see what you are doing and God will bless your hand work. Mm. God is not going to bless your emotion. Yes, God is not going to mm. bless your laziness. That's true, sir. What God is going to bless is your hand work. Mm. And if you have found that hand work, mm. there should be excellency. Mm. You should perfect what you are doing. Mm. And uh, don't say because I'm a Christian, God is going to promote you sharply and that you're going to overtake somebody in the front because you are a Christian. No. Mm. The principles you follow. If you do it well, God will go to bring you to the front. Yes, sir. If one believer does it better than you, God will also bring you to the front. It's a law. It does not respect it's all of our criminal status. It's a fundamental law. Yes, sir. Uh, having said all this, brother, um, I wish you would say a few things so that we we'll complete it with a, mm. a short prayer. In, in conclusion, yeah. I want to use this platform to address fellow ministers of the gospel. I'm not saying this to indict you or to bring you down. But I so much believe that in this end time, there are three W's that we preach this end time gospel. It is the wonders from God, the wisdom from God, and the wealth from God. Yeah. These three things are like three pot stand. And as a result of that, I am encouraging you, sir. Please go out there. Do not wait until somebody comes and bring tithe to your table or seed or offering. And as when they don't bring it, now you get to the pulpit with anger and you begin to pour out venom upon the people that you're supposed to be a blessing to. I encourage you, sir, if you are called into the ministry and the congregation have not yet grown that large. Please find something else that you can do to support the work. Don't kill the work when it's still a baby. When we do that, we are dignifying the calling. It is a higher calling. That office, a lot of people have spilled their blood so as to bring in the baton to your hands. I encourage you that generations unborn will receive this baton in clarity, in purity, and in righteousness. This is my prayer for you. God bless you. Until we meet again, my name is Apostle Hannes Eugene. God bless you. Thank you. I want to say a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we well, thank you because you created us and endured, endured with us spiritual abilities. Help us to acknowledge such and make use of it. Those who will adhere to your principles, I pray that you might come to their aid and bless them, bless us as pray, uh, abundantly so that we should progress in life. Thank you for the hearers. You bless them mm. as they have listened to the word. Mm. Thank you for answering our prayers. Mm -hmm. For we pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I'm still Reverend Chris Ogwala. Thank you.